Adventures of Uncle Jimmy, a Warner Brothers radio production starring William Farnham. Original story and direction by Edward Lynn. comes a series of problems. And very often these problems are followed by a crisis or crises. And so it happened in the Stewart household. Had it not been for the family friend and counselor, Uncle Jimmy, Florence and Arnold Stewart would have indeed found themselves in a dilemma. At the moment, Florence and Uncle Jimmy have just returned from a walk. While they have not exactly settled the problem at hand, they have indeed seen some new light shed on it. You see, Mrs. Stewart... This girl, Rosalind, is really an entity all by herself. Now, granted, she is Robert's wife, your daughter-in-law. But she must function as a woman and a wife, using her own best judgment in her own behalf. I suppose it's all true. But the very thought of Mrs. Jensen adopting a girl who's my own daughter-in-law, what that means for the rest of my natural life, a woman who's a perfect stranger to me, will have a definite hand in attempting to control the affairs of my family. Now, Mrs. Stewart, you mustn't jump at conclusions... Mrs. Jensen's only thought in wanting to adopt Rosalind is to save her from what might be the tragic consequences of a very involved family situation. Oh, I wish Bobby was strong enough to see Rosalind now. See her as she'll probably be for the rest of her life, with her head twisted to one side. Then I'd know what his reaction will be without waiting another week. Well, no one's more anxious than I am. But what the future holds, no man will ever know. At best, we can only guess. It's all so complicated, Uncle Jim. And yet all so simple, as I told you when we had our nice walk just a few moments ago. The greatest healing agent in the world is a mother's love. When you were little, you made bumps, bruises. A thousand and one little hurts disappear like magic. When we're older, it makes us bear the more lasting pain with a wonderful, tolerant patience. Now, of course, if, if you don't want Mrs. Jetson to offer Rosalind a mother's love... Why don't I? Yes, why don't I? That, that's what everyone wonders. But I can't find the right answer to a question that runs through my mind a hundred times a day. Well, my dear, there's very little more to be said on this subject of adoption. It's no longer an issue between Rosalind, Mrs. Jetson, and yourself, but a fight between the pride of Florence Stewart and the heart the easiest thing in the world for any woman would be to assume an attitude of love for a daughter-in-law she didn't love. But I couldn't be that dishonest. Glory, aren't you ever coming to bed? It's getting awfully late. Yes, I know, Arnold, and you feel terribly sorry for me because I have to get up so early in the morning. Mm, I think I'd better get some sleep myself. You know the old saying, each day to its own problems and each problem to the day thereof. How will it all end? Will we ever find a solution for all the problems in our family? Oh, yes, Mrs. Stewart. If we take one thing at a time and approach it honestly and sincerely, with love in our hearts, compassion in our souls, and every gesture filled with tolerance and unselfishness. Ah, <sighs> Sonny, sometimes I wish I'd never been born. 
never brought children into the world. Each one of mine, Robert, Dorothy, and Johnny, seem to have brought a special problem with him. Well, I do wish I could leave you with some sort of thought that would comfort you. Something I had thought especially for you. His own problems. And you as a mother should know that each child also brings its own special blessing. Will you, Dorothy? You can't read it all at once. I got it first, but I want to see the funnies, too. Give me half of it. Gee whiz, you think that you had a monopoly on the paper. Now, look here, you two. I want you to stop this wrangling, and I want you to stop it now. Well, the funnies are written for little boys and girls, and not for grown-ups anyway. Oh, is that so? Since when? Since... Well, none of your business, that's when. Johnny, you stop quarreling with your sister, or I'll send you to bed. <laughs> there, you see? You're taking sides with Dorothy against me. Now she's laughing at me. Oh, Arnold, I'm too nervous and too tired to stand an entire evening of such nonsensical wrangling. Good heavens. There are issues in this house bigger than who's going to read the funnies first. Oh, well, if you really want me to settle the whole thing. Give me those funnies. I will not. Oh, Mom, she yanked them right out of my hand. Listen, you take that. Ow! Oh, Mommy's kicking me again. Hey, give me those funnies. Oh, no, she would must you sit there like a bump at a log. All right, now that you've told Johnny, Dorothy, give me that paper. There. Oh, Mommy! Look what Daddy did in the paper! He tore up the whole thing! Oh, why, Arnold Stewart, of all the insane things to do, I never missed a woman's page, and there were two recipes I wanted to cut out. Well, now the whole thing is settled once and for all, and nobody gets any part of the paper. Oh, oh such a temper. And that isn't all. Dorothy, you march right off to bed. Oh, Daddy. And you too, Johnny. Please, Daddy, don't make me go to bed. I said march right off to bed. Both of you, do you hear me? It's all your fault. Maybe I've been so stingy and selfish you wouldn't have to go to bed so well, early. Well, 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 both of you off to bed so early. Now, isn't that just fine? Nothing better in the world for growing children than sleep. Oh, nuts. <laughs> well, I apparently said the wrong thing at just the right time. Seems to me that's about the best thing I do lately. Another thing, Arnold. I want you to have a little talk with Johnny about his language. I suppose we must tolerate a certain amount of slang, All but... right, Laurie, all right. But if you don't mind, I'd like to finish this chapter and smoke my pipe in peace. Are you going to pass it around, Mr. Stewart? Huh? Yeah, what's that? Going to pass it around? <laughs> uh, pass, pass what around, Uncle Jimmy? The pipe of peace. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid I don't get the joke. <laughs> if you both excuse me, I... I think I'll just finish this chapter in the den. You better turn out the lights while you're reading The Escape of the Missing Corpse. You might enjoy that detective story just a little more. Thanks for the sarcasm. (laughs) Well, better thanks for the sarcasm than thanks for the memory. Well, I'm glad you appreciate your own humor, Florrie. It's such a very special brand that only you could appreciate it. Yes, it's just like your tobacco, dear. A very special brand. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Well... I got the last word. Uh, you happy? Mm-hmm. You know, it means more to a woman than you can possibly imagine, Uncle Jimmy. Proves conclusively to her that she isn't slipping. Oh, you women. Yes. Aren't we wonderful? Oh, now, don't tell me you can't live with us. You can't live without yeah, us. that's one time. You didn't take the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, what's that you're making? Oh, it's a uh, whatnot for Rosalind and Robert's proposed offspring. Mm, what not, eh? Hmm. Pretty. You like to fuss for the baby, Mrs. Stewart? Mm, yes, I. I don't mind. You know, it makes the evening pass more quickly anyway. When our fingers are busy, our thoughts aren't quite as troubled. Mm. Why, you so well, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you. I've had a lot of practice. You know, when Arnold and I were first married, I made all my own things. And some of his too. Believe it or not. Oh, I believe it all right. You know, he showed me a pair of trousers that you made for him. <laughs> showed them with pride, too. What? Has <laughs> Arnold kept those trousers all these years? Sure has. Well, they certainly were an experiment. <laughs> I imagine. Oh, I'll never forget the thrill I got out of making them. And you know, the miracle was that they actually fit. Marvelous. Of course, that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, I guess I'll run over and have a chat with Rosalind. Got Bobby all fixed up for the night. Covers are just reading lamp at the right angle. Uncle Jimmy, don't you ever get tired of doing beautiful things for people. 
I mean, you could use some of that time for yourself. Oh, bless your heart. I don't do very much for any of you. Heavens, if I had as much money as time, oh, just think of all the really wonderful things I could do for all of you. Now, just what, for instance, could you do with money that you haven't already done with your loving kindness? Well, let me see. I'd buy Bobby an aeroplane. Mm-hmm. And Johnny? Let me see. Printing press that would just turn out funnies. <laughs> oh. And Dorothy, an automatic fudge-making machine installed right alongside of a bed. Oh, what now, for Arnold Jesus. Stewart, let's see. Oh, a self-filling humidor. No. <laughs> uh, you want me to go on? No. No, Uncle Jimmy, I think I have a pretty fair idea by now just what you do with money. Mm-hmm. Isn't it a blessing that I haven't any? Mm-hmm. Well, I won't be gone very long. Any message for Mrs. Jetson or Rosalind? No. No, nothing for Mrs. Jetson that I can think of. For Rosalind? No. Nothing special for her either, I guess. Well, you know, it doesn't have to be anything special. She just loves to get little greetings from you. Well, uh, I can't think of anything at the moment. Oh, oh, of course, best regards. Always that. All right. Best regards from Robert's mother to Rosalind. Mm-hmm. Say, now you know that doesn't sound very nice. I'll just come along and tell Rosalind myself what I want to say. Don't you think that all these visits to Rosalind might be misconstrued? You mean that uh, she might think I really am taking a motherly interest in her? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I can't possibly see that there'd be anything wrong in that. Well, well what I meant to say was that... What you said. And I don't think I'll change a word. Uh, but, but, Uncle Jimmy, <laughs> you misunderstood me. No, it's all right. I, I... Yes, dear. Your mother-in-law actually came over with me to see how you were. But she was just here this morning. That makes twice in one day. Mm-hmm. Hope she makes it three times. Well, I'll just... mm, very, very. Do you want some advice, Rosalind? Why? Oh, yes, of course I do. Well, don't be too impressed by the visit. You know, just take it for granted. And don't be talked out of being adopted by Mrs. Jetson. Yet. certainly looks like Uncle Jim is assuming his role of Mr. Fixit in earnest. Do you think he will really affect a complete re- reconciliation between Mrs. Stewart and Rosalind? <laughs> 